Earl Sweatshirt has released a new album called Vor Dyer. Vor Di I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to say that again. Which means it's time to do another lyrical breakdown and analyze his writing style. This time with new material, which is super exciting because I've never had the chance to do that before on this channel. So if you haven't seen any of my lyrical breakdown videos and you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Dylan. Welcome to Unearned Reviews. And essentially, what I do in these videos is I break down the writing style of my favorite artists so that you and I can learn from it and apply you the really interesting methods and techniques and tendencies they have to our own material. So this breakdown is for you, it's for me. Because I've already made two Earl Sweatshirt videos before on his writing style, I was really wondering if I could even conjure up a third video that said something new about the way he approaches his material. And then I got to the track Free the Ruler where he literally tells the audience how he approaches writing and storytelling. And he says, I don't have a message to give to my listeners. I'm just trying to help them understand where I'm coming from. And that's the end of the video. No, I'm just kidding. But what he said right there is such a simple statement but I guess coming from such a complex artist, it really struck me. And it reminded me that ultimately all of our goals as writers, as artists, is really just to have our listeners understand us and our perspective, whatever that may be. So the question I wanna answer in this video in relation to your projects and mine is how can we better help our audience understand us? How can we make our narrative more captivating, interesting, or entertaining so that people will stay to listen to us and eventually become invested in our story like we're invested in Earl's. Now Earl at this point is a master of this in his career and all over this album gives examples of how to deliver your story and perspective in a way that is endlessly revisitable. I don't know if that's a word, but it's a word now. And so the first thing I noticed on this album, on Free the Ruler specifically, is how useful having an extensive vocabulary can be when it comes to writing lyrically dense verses. I just wanna point out a couple of the words that Earl chooses. Excavate what I can, how you gonna reallocate my land, reanimated, I once had kicked the bucket. The thing that jumped out to me immediately about this is how he chooses words that spark imagery. When he says excavate, you immediately think of digging, but not just any kind of digging, a very specific kind of digging where you are digging for something. You are reaching into, you know, typically the ground if you're an excavator, and you are trying to pull something of value up out of that ground, up out of that soil. And in this case, when he's talking about excavating, it's a very specific kind of self-reflection. It's not nostalgia, it's not wistful consideration, it's Earl digging through his past for something worthwhile that he can learn from. That is such a detailed and specific communication of a very unique headspace to be in, because again, you can look back on your past and, and think about things and be introspective in so many different ways. So to choose a word that perfectly illustrates the kind of introspection Earl is doing, again, this is what I mean when I say having a mastery over the English language and, and really kind of seeking out words that may communicate what you're trying to say a little bit more specifically. Another word here that immediately brings to my mind an image is allocate. The process of splitting up, sectioning something up, spreading out resources to other things, right? Earl says here, how can you tell me about my past? How can you section out and organize and divide my land, the land that I'm excavating? Again, there's a precision in his words that makes it so much easier to understand what he's talking about in a deeper way. I don't even know if I would have gleaned this much from that line if he hadn't used the word allocate. Actually, no, I mean, he didn't even use the word allocate. He used reallocate, which means that the land was already allocated, whether he's saying by his family or by him or by divine power, it's already been allocated. But then he goes on to describe himself as reanimated, which again is another word that immediately sparks an image in your head. I think choices like these are what separate truly great writers from writers that are just pretty decent. It's that process of deliberating over every single word and being as intentional as possible with what you're trying to say. The second thing that I noticed that Earl does on this album, and it's kind of related to that idea of 
intentionality and deliberation is that he conceptually stretches a word to its limits. Take this brilliant set of lines on Sentry. Blood stains on my fatherland, blood stains on my motherland, tough clay, all of its red, stuck in the jeans and the fabric and the 23 little strands. In these lines, he explores how blood both represents life and death in ways that attack the concept from all angles. He considers blood's symbolic relation to ancestry and family, referencing his fatherland and his motherland, but also provides a harrowing image of blood stains as evidence of the violence and suffering his ancestors went through. But that's not all. He thinks about the color of blood, and in this finds a brilliant parallel to his fatherland and motherland Africa that he actually just got finished referencing in in a couple of lines before and in this he references the abundance of red soil and clay found on that continent but then he also thinks very practically about the physical purpose of blood how it runs through everything in the human body and contains so many aspects of life holds so many things together referencing genes and 23 little strands which obviously is chromosomes and obviously you know with that idea of genes and fabric and chromosomes again because he got specific about the idea of blood there were so many more opportunities for wordplay if you kind of struggle to kind of come up with like you know fun double entendres or triple entendres or just things that seem clever this might be something that works for you taking a specific word, idea, concept, or whatever, and thinking of like five different uses for it, even if they seem like really obvious and rudimentary, and start seeing how those things play off of each other like Earl does here. And what you'll find is that it will start to come naturally. The more you train your brain to search for these deeper links and interesting rhyme schemes and flows, the more it naturally begins to think that way. And with time and practice, it'll become second nature. I genuinely believe this sort of writing is not as hard as it seems. It's really just about shifting how you view words and sentence structure and how you communicate. The third thing that Earl does here, and it's all over this album, is that he sticks to the mission statement that he said on Free the Ruler. I think it's really useful to have a mission statement going into a project, or even if it's for a specific song. I've kind of mentioned this in a couple of other videos, but I think it's extremely important to know why you're writing the thing that you're writing. What we know about Earl and what I've definitely found in all my lyrical breakdowns, he is first and foremost concerned with getting things off of his chest. So he's always going to be writing specifically from his individual perspective. So that bleeds into every single part of his writing. He's very rarely talking about something that doesn't directly involve him or how he feels. Now this is different from someone like Billy Woods who may have an entire verse just talking about a story or make some observations on the human condition and you know American culture and Zimbabwean culture and, and, and all of those different things, and politics and history and, and all that kind of stuff. Because that is true to what Billy Woods does and what Billy Woods is and that's what interests him. And I say all this to say, when you're watching videos like this and watching other, you know, like how to's and writing style videos and all these different things, I think it's so important to put yourself and your aspirations first ahead of all of those different tips and tricks because everyone is going to have 10 million different ways to, to you know, recommend you do something. You have to find the thing that works for you. I talked about this a little bit in my last writing video about how Sometimes it can be dangerous taking writing advice that is actually not congruent with the way you see the world and the way that you do things, right? And so I think it's really, really important to know that, know what you want out of your project, know what you're trying to say, because that in and of itself is a writing style. And on, you know, I don't know, I think this is Earl's fifth or sixth or seventh project he's had so many, but he's just so clearly himself. And, and that is the benefit of really being again kind of um, deliberate about leaning into what is at the core of what you you want to say and what you want to express when you stay true to that and you stay authentic to that you know regardless of what writing tips or styles you you want to emulate or think about if at the core of it it's always you and, and what you want people to know about you. That will always give you a better chance at creating a distinct voice and a compelling narrative when it comes to your projects, when you're considering other people's work, when you're trying to, you know, compare it and, you know, think about it in relation to your own. Never forget that you should be your North Star, right? When it comes to what you're shooting for and what you're trying to do. 
there can be other stars in that constellation in that galaxy in that sky but you need to be the north star so do with that information what you will let me know if any of that resonated with you if you saw that same kind of quality in this album and in earl's writing in general thank you so much for bearing with me this entire time you can check out the other lyrical breakdown videos i did i've done two on earl i've done some on arm and hammer i also do other writing things on this channel and musical analysis and reactions bunch of fun stuff if you like this video you'll like all that other stuff and i think that's it goodbye have a fantastic day adios